All right, so here's the before. This is the arm, that's, that's the neck, arm, elbow, shoulder, and this is the wrist. You can see it does rotate, but the rotation is right here, and this is pretty stiff. It's designed to be stiff because it's a posable dowel skeleton. It's not meant to be loose swinging around like a robot it needs to be loose at the joints to cut down on friction and make it easier on the motors. So this thing does turn, but it's kind of hard to turn. So I wanted to make it turn here and have this pretty much not need to turn and just be rigid except for right here. So I wanted the turn to be somewhere in the wrist area to uh, pronate and supinate the wrist. So what I did is I cut off right here all the way through and just removed all of this. I don't need any of this. And I just kept this little stud stubbed out and then I ground down the teeth on it. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. This is where I did it on the right arm. You can see I made the cut. I, I smoothed out all these teeth using my, uh, my Dremel. I smoothed it out with this part. And then the cut I made with the, um, the Dremel's, uh, this tool, a little um, diamond cutting disc, cut it right off. And this is a, um, a WEN rotary tool. This is like 32 bucks on Amazon for this one. The blue one, 16. Okay, so anyways, um, once you get to this point, uh, I'm using quarter inch washers to create my um, rotating point here at the wrist. So All right, now the last one, I'm gonna weld, like right here, so these won't come off this way. Um, and this will form the rotation of the wrist. Now, I'm also planning to probably glue these all together, but I might just glue it from the outside. I might just have them all stacked and just, just start wrapping it with glue and fiberglass and building a thick cake around it will be fine. Yeah, that'll be fine. So that's what I'll do. Just wrap it in fiberglass tape with um, 401 glue, I think I'll use, and just build it thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. And then I'll eventually mer like um, maybe sculpt that or merge that with my 3D print of the um, Olin radius, which I fused. And then those will form a nice little joint right here where the wrist, all the little tiny bones of the wrist will be sewn onto that with the bone sleeves sewing into that. And I'll wrap that in cloth and then the bone sleeves in cloth. And this can't go this way and it can easily, easily rotate. And that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Yeah, I think that'll work great. So that weld is the, gonna be the key thing I gotta do, which is kind of a pain in the butt to get out my welder. I, I rarely weld. But um, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use my flux wire welder. It's a hundred dollar one. I don't have um, any fancier welders at all right now. Although I, I want to make a welder, but I don't really want to take time away from this to work on that. So I'm just gonna use the kind of crappy welder I have. I, I don't think it needs to be the best weld in the world. Um, it just needs to be able to hold uh, like a hundred pounds. So, I mean, it needs to be pretty good. I'll probably beef it up pretty good like that, like make it a nice fat weld. Shoot, I might just make it a huge weld just to make sure these don't come flying off once the robot's holding like a 70 pound dumbbell or something. I don't want that flying off. All right, boys, so I basically welded that. Hold on. I basically welded that topmost washer and the one behind it got stuck to it as well. But the rest of the stack I did not weld to this front mushroom top. So I just made like a mushroom top overlapping. I would have preferred to use just a bigger washer as the last one because that's our end stop to keep these from sliding off the end. Plus it also will keep um, whatever we add to the outside of this section from sliding off the end as well. It has to really stay on here. So having this um, 
have a ledge that comes out like that on all sides was important. Uh, that'll keep whatever's on here extra on here. But you can see this still spins pretty freely. And so that'll be the pronation supination. And so this thing, which is the end of the wrist, the ulna and radius, this is the radius, this is the ulna bone, this is ABS. This will need to attach here somewhere, but not touch this end stop, only touch that. So we need to come out, over, and into this area to attach this. So we need like straps to come down. So like weld here and then curve some metal and then screw it into there or something like that. Something like that. Um, and I got this bag of little hinges and I'm thinking I can somehow retrofit those onto here and weld it onto that section. So that's the next step. This also needs to be cleaned up. I'm gonna um, use my Dremel cutter to sand this smooth on that face so that when this stuff rubs, it's rubbing on a smooth plane. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit. Spins freely. We could grease it up to make it a little quieter, I guess, but. I think that's good. We might um, wrap something low friction around here so this that when the hand doesn't engage, it pushes back every time. So we'll have less play. It'll just kind of move in place, but not be able to do so much of that. That's bad. So we'll just kind of hug it up here, or we could put some stuff here, like um, polypropylene sheets. We could stack them as like little discs and then this will rub on them, but because a lot of the gap was taken away, it, it kind of stay more in this area, and it wouldn't it wouldn't move as much. So we'll kind of get that semi snug, but not so snug that it takes away movement freedom. Um, but that's pretty good. I'm happy with this. And the little knobs we left, we made sure to make them kind of thick, is so that when we wrap fiberglass around here, it has something to bite on, so it doesn't like slide off and decouple ever. So we wanted them to be protrusions. So the fiberglass wrapped tightly and glued tightly will never play that way or that way. It will stay on this piece. This piece is gonna hold the entire weight of the hand. And so like if the hand's holding a 70 pound dumbbell, this is gonna be rubbing hard on here when it tries to pronate or supinate. So that's how that's gonna work.